Hey everyone, thanks for watching the Commander's Brew right here on YouTube. If you like these deck techs and you like what we're making, go ahead and hit subscribe. It really helps us out a lot. If you want to help out even more, you can go check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash commandersbrew. Help us brew these decks in our Discord chat. Uh, uh, get, you know, Get some perks in there and uh, um, you can really help us actually make the show. It's uh, a lot of fun. Uh, but let's get into today's deck tech. And today's deck tech is Golos Tireless Pilgrim and his legendary artifacts. That's the band name. That is the band name. And they are playing a show tonight. And we're all going. And it's at <laughs> Lee's Palace. Uh, a historic Toronto uh, music landmark. Um, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, so uh, this is this is the deck this, this week. It's, uh, it's all about legendary artifacts. Uh, I'll tell you what I was doing is I uh, was looking at making a Golo stack after um, kind of being inspired by what's in standard right now. And Golos is really uh, blowing up, um, popping off, popping off. He's the most like powerful deck right now in standard. He's involved very much, but he's also a he's also an amazing commander, uh, really yeah. fun to play with. And I'd say never before has a five color commander been this easy to cast. And also been um, help you get the five colors, right? It gets the land. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I do. I do feel it's irrelevant to jump in and say that, like that that advanced ban announcement that's coming out comes out later the day we're recording this. So go, this deck will likely no longer be the most powerful deck in standard. Uh, everyone's expecting Field of the Dead to be banned, and the question mark is: Will Oko also be banned? That is right. Um, now, it, yeah, the weird thing about that being like, it's um, Golos isn't the reason the deck is super powerful, which is kind of right. weird, right? Isn't that right? Like, isn't that weird? Well, it it is. I, I, yeah, Field of the Dead is what makes it kind of no fun to like. Yeah. Uh, it makes it automatic. I think Golos is still tons of potential. It doesn't change that it's an um, probably the newest and best five color generic commander if you don't know what to do and you just like i just need a five color commander i think golos is going to be your go-to from now on until we get a better one and the fact that that banning's on deck maybe is why this deck this card is pretty cheap golos is not as expensive it, as you'd think yeah it, for one in it's rampant in standard it didn't go up it feels like it didn't go up that much but anyways let's take a look at it it's a uh, golos yeah. is a uh five casting cost legendary artifact creature he's a scout uh, and there are lots of scouts in Magic. I thought at first maybe this is he's the first scout, but no, no, no. There's lots of scouts. Uh, Golos Tireless Pilgrim. He's a 3-5. It says, when Golos enters the battlefield, you may search your library for la a land card. Uh, put, a, uh, put that card onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. And then uh, Golos has this ability, which is 2 and Wooburg, so 7 in total. Uh, exile the top 3 cards of your library. You may play uh, them this turn without paying their mana costs. Uh, that is a very strong ability, uh, very Jota-like, uh, except it's better than Jota because it lets you look at three cards and you can play all of them, right? Yeah, um, I mean, th that, that's a that's a debatable topic because Jota, you're going to play what's in your hand and you yep. know that it's a bomb and it's like you might get two lands on a ramp spell with Golos. That's true, it's true, uh, but probably not in this deck. Um, <laughs> true. You're going to get your seven mana worth, I promise you. Um but yes, yes, uh, both, trust me, Jota's in the stack, so we're going to use him too. <laughs> uh, but it's not just a standard Golos, like, big stuff deck. It's, it's, we, we got a theme going on here. Um, but this is a really cool ability. You can play lands from this ability, which is nice. Uh, and yeah, like Sean said, you can play every, everything that you cast with it, which is great. Um, I was looking at it, and I was like, I didn't want to build just a classic big stuff, you know, go nuts deck. Uh because Golos is a legendary artifact. And mm. uh, recently in Throne of Eldraine, we've seen some very cool legendary artifacts. Mm -hmm. uh, now, a couple of them didn't really fit with the deck and are and or are $20, so I didn't use them. <laughs> the Great Henge. Uh, but Great Henge would have been great in this deck. But we did use some of the other ones, and we did uh, make it our theme of just using really cool, really powerful... Uh, uh, just raw power level stuff here, legendary artifacts for this deck. So, um, I, I, you know, uh, why don't we just get right into the old uh, neat moves?
Okay, so uh, we've got Golos, so that means we're going to be using that five color ability. There's no question about it. And luckily, uh, we've got a couple ways to make this ability go really wild. And uh, Sean, why don't you talk about these, just read these first couple cards, because they're all going to help Golos uh, multiply what it can do. Okay, this first one up, he's a legendary creature. He's all arms and gut. It's <laughs> Kirkesh Onaki Ancient. He's uh, <laughs> pure gut. Gut and arm? The, look at that arm. Yeah, he's a lot of <laughs> arm. And, like, let's be fair, those are some pretty huge tusks. <laughs> oh, yeah. I assumed that was, like, a hat. But, yeah, if those are tusks, then, yeah, this dude is, uh, oh, boy, yeah. uh, proportionally interesting let's <laughs> <laughs> put it that way yeah <laughs> it's like you playing spore and just like went crazy designing ooh. your <laughs> ooh, ooh. like that's what it seems like he's doing yeah anyway kirkesh onaki ancient two red red legendary creature ogre spirit four three uh whenever you activate an ability of an artifact if it's not a mana ability you can pay red and copy it and you're allowed to choose new copies so we're looking to get a bunch of artifacts so that, that's golos right away so like mm -hmm. you can do go an extra red to do golos twice um we're talking tanos urza's apprentice blue red for a legendary human ar artificer one three with haste blue red tap copy target activated or triggered ability you control from an artifact source uh with both of these we got triple golos activation it was it costs a bit more but yeah it's a lot of mana but fine. yeah yeah illusionist brazers two mana for an artifact artifact equipment it equips for three whenever an activated ability of equipped creature is activated as long as it's not a mana ability copy it okay okay and oh yeah yeah those are the big ones so those are the ones that are going to copy activated abilities of creatures specifically artifact creatures or just artifacts in general yeah i can't wait to see what uh, what potential we're unlocking. just one golos with any of these <laughs> yeah holy crow look out <laughs> you're getting a lot of stuff but the beauty Six, part nine yeah the beauty part of specifically illusion spracers is is really great in the deck because we have a lot of activated abilities among our creatures and artifacts um so Illusion Spacers is still going to be really good because of the creatures, but really, we're, like, Tanos and uh, Kirkesh give us a lot of really cool abilities because we can use our legendary artifacts, both triggered and activated abilities. Kirkesh is just activated. Tanos is both. Um, they're going to give us a lot of cool stuff to do, and we can copy it, and they're, they're kind of the heart of the deck outside of Golos. It's really, really cool. It looks like we set up for some real big shenanigans, which uh, is my favorite thing. Yeah, and it's it really is just kind of this raw power level. There's not a ton of, like, we have synergy in, in what we're talking about right here. Um, but as far as the actual, like, ways to win, the synergy is kind of just all over the map. Um, but we have ways to do it a lot and get a lot of value from it. So it's kind of just like a value uh, power deck. Which is a mm. weird thing, uh, but um, we got to, we had another little uh, package here, which is uh, a couple cards to let us um, take advantage of Golos's other ability, uh, and that is the the ability to search up that land and put it into the battlefield. Um, it, by the way, it does come in tapped, so that's key. But it is any land, right? Uh, so we've got some utility lands and stuff like that. We're going to be using them uh, with Dead Eye Navigator, classic, classic commander card for blue blue. For the uh, spirit, the five five soul bond, uh, when it soul bonds with another creature, and then you can pay one in a blue to exile that creature and then return to the battlefield under your control. And that happens immediately, and it's great protection from for Golos for Dead Eye Navigator. Obviously, we all know this, uh, and also we'll get that uh, ETB ability going again. So you can just pay one in a blue, get a land. Pay one in a blue, get a land. One in a blue, get it. Like, this is just ramp. It becomes the best mm, ramp. Gross. <laughs> yeah, it's just <laughs> disgusting value engine. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's not even, it's not just Sultai. Uh, yeah. Also, we have Conjurer's Closet, which is a slower version of this. It's the five mana artifact that says at the beginning of your end step, you may exile target creature you control, then return that card to the battlefield under your control. So Conjurer's Closet is just going to let us do it on the end step. Um, and we'll just uh, blink a creature and get uh, some abilities. Uh, obviously, we're going to get Goloses, and this is one that Tanos can can double uh, with his ability. To yeah, get things going twice. So, love having these artifacts out here doing doing some extra work. And and because of the way it stacks. Uh, you're going to copy it with Tanos and put two Conjurer's Closets on the stack back-to-back. -back. 
they both can hit the same creature because it comes back before the next instance of Conjurer's Closet wants to go. You don't have to choose until the ability tries to resolve. That's right. Yes. I'm going to say yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> either way, there's other creatures you can bounce to. It's great. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, we can get both of Golos's abilities. We can get extra value out of those, which is really nice, which leads us into the rest of the deck and all the different things we want to do here, which Ooh. is also, by the way, very legendary themed in general. All the creatures are also legendary in this deck, except for, you know, a, a few like Dead Eye Navigator. Um, because I was originally going to make this like a revisit of my like Helm of the Host Atraxa deck, which mm. we had a version of it on the show, but it was Rubinia Soul Singer, I think. Um, and then I made it for Atraxa Bowl. I made it into Atraxa. But this is kind of a revisitation of that deck, but we're focusing on the artifacts. So uh, let's talk about this next uh, couple of, of uh, cards. Basically, what, it, what, what this is going to be is once we get some legendary artifacts out there, um, if they get destroyed or something, which is like a Vandal Blast is going to be really bad for us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, unless we draw any of these next few cards here, which are really going to help us out. Yeah, we're talking about uh, Keith's The Hidden Hand. <laughs> Kethis. Uh, yeah. But uh, he, here at Commander's Brew, we love putting normal human names. <laughs> uh, although, oh yeah, Ke Kethis is an elf, so not a human. But like, we like to put regular, mm -hmm. average names mm -hmm. in <laughs> place of this. So, uh, of note, Christine Talisman. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> Keith's The Hidden Hand mm -hmm. is an Obzon so white, black, green, that's what it costs. Legendary Elf Advisor for a 3-4. Legendary spells you cast cost one generic less. That's pretty good. Yep. Most of this is legendary, so yep. it's like a, it's like one of those little diamonds for all of our stuff. Sure. Exile two legendary cards from your graveyard until end of turn. Each other legendary card in your graveyard, because those two are exiled, gains. You may play this card from your graveyard. So... If we can just reload from the graveyard, that is, I, I can see how your standard inspiration extended to this because there was that one deck in standard a little bit with all the Keiths and Mox <laughs> Ambers just recently. Yeah, 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 pretty neat. Yeah, very cool. Uh, also, we have Shroom the Hegemon, three and Esper, white, blue, black, legendary artifact creature, Sphinx, five, five, flyer. When Shroom enters the battlefield, you can return target artifact card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Now, this is the way to do it. And this is also going to work, obviously, very good with Dead Eye Navigator and Conjurer's wow. Closet as well. Wow. Um, as well as Taunos, again, going to be able to double this triggered ability. <laughs> uh, Shroom, very, very powerful, very, very good card in this deck. Yeah. Uh, we've also got a little combo here. We've got Silas Wren, who's the one blue black. 2-2 Death Touch. Uh, Silas Rem was a partner commander of the last deck we did on the show. Uh, he's got Death Touch. Whenever he deals combat damage to a player, you can choose a target artifact in your graveyard, and you can cast it this turn. And that works pretty nicely with Bosch Iron Golem. Chris Bosch Iron Golem. <laughs> Eight generic for a 6-7 legendary artifact creature golem. Also legendary, yep. Trample, three and a red. So this is an activated ability that we can double with any of our <laughs> things that double. Uh, three and a red, sacrifice an artifact. So we sacrifice the artifact once as payment, but yeah. the effect gets to be doubled. Yes. We don't need to sacrifice multiple. Uh, Bosch Iron Golem deals damage equal to the sacrificed artifact's converted mana cost to any target. No problem. I'm going to double that. I'm going to sack a huge artifact. I'm going to do tons of damage. I'm going to use Sharoom to get that artifact right back out of the graveyard. Exactly. Maybe Keith's is going to re help me recast them. Maybe Silas Wren's going to help me recast them. Who knows? Yeah, Bosch ends up being <coughs> one of our best win cons in the deck, actually. Um, and kind of just accidentally. Like, at first, I just threw every legendary artifact that looked like I could afford it into a deck. And then yeah. I sort of looked at things. And, and I was like, ooh, Bosch is so good. Because, you know, we've got a lot of high casting cost artifacts that Golos is going to help us cast. And then Bosch can help, can sack, and we can really throw around some damage. So yeah, uh, that works. That ends up working really well. So speaking of very high casting cost artifacts, we've also got Elbrus the the Binding Blade in this deck, which is a, this is a card I've always wanted to include in a commander deck. Uh, and finally, we get to do it here. It's a seven mana legendary artifact equipment. Uh, okay, I better have a you know seven mana for an equipment. It better have a huge effect. Well, uh, let's we'll see here's, what. <laughs> here's the good thing. It it's only it only equips for one. 
Okay, so it must have a massive yeah. ability. Right, then. so a quick creature gets plus one plus zero. Huh. <laughs> it doesn't seem well <laughs> worth it for well, a seven amount of artifact. Whoa, whoa, that's, that's <laughs> not much. Uh, but of course, when a quick creature deals combat damage to a player, you unattach Elbrus and then you transform it into Withengar, Unbound, Whoa. which is a legendary demon. It's 13 13, has flying, intimidate, and trample. It's going to get through. Uh, this guy has <laughs> bones as abs. Yeah, it's, yeah, he's a mean looking dude. Uh, and whenever a player loses the game, <laughs> put 13 plus one plus one counters on Withengar, Unbound. Uh, so just a fun card, just a big, silly, fun card. Thirteen, thirteen, going to do a lot of damage that way. If someone happens to lose the game, great. It's a 26, 26. Um, wow. Sh- sure. Right. You know what I mean? Like, that's fine. Um, there, the, the flavor text is there are not enough lives on Innistrad to satisfy his thirst for repu- retribution. <laughs> oh, Withengar Unbound is one thirsty boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, and look at this picture. He is a thirsty boy. Look at that. That's one. Th- that's a thirst trap. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, I don't know about that personally. I don't, I'm not gonna. I'm, you know, not not as my taste. He's showing to go. off the abs. He's His out bone there. abs. Oh man, Withingar's <laughs> out here with no shirt on, trying to get your likes. <laughs> Who wants those likes, man? Uh, he's he's working hard. <laughs> okay. S- okay, we have someone. We have a visitor. Ooh. Okay. Time for Harry's pick. Harry's picks of the deck. Um, in fact, actually, this next one is Harry's big pick. Uh, so, so keep in mind, we have Elbrus, Elbrus the Binding Blade. Now, combine that with Thada Adele, Acquisitor, again from uh, a very recent deck we built. Uh, one blue, blue, legendary Merfolk Rogue uh, with Island Walk. Uh, and it's a 2 2. And whenever Thada hits, uh, we get to look at that player's library, and um, until end of turn, you can cast an artifact from their library. You can play that yeah. card. So throw Elbrus on Thada. Get uh, now she's a three-two with Island Walk. Attack the blue player. We can flip Elbrus, and we can cast a uh, an artifact from their deck now. You probably saw Ring to start, but exactly. Like, who knows? This is a nice little bit of ramp, but also, what if they have a legendary artifact? Whoa. We can take their <laughs> legendary artifacts now. Yes, yes. Harry, great pick. I really appreciate it. Great job, buddy. Thank you, Harry. <laughs> Harry's pick. Oh, man. Great. I uh, can't wait to hear his picks when he starts doing baby talk. When he starts, like, yeah, just yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. He can do that now, but it's just less on command. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that Elbrus that... Uh, combo is quite nice and like i said it gets us even more artifacts which is just very good for this deck cool hey Uh, your your screen got bumped are you okay still on the thing oh yeah i'm fine okay yeah it looks everything looks good (laughs) good it it opened up like a door for a second oh yeah it's good um why don't you take this next pair because i think this is really right up your alley Ooh, i think it is okay uh, where this next bunch here, these legendary artifacts uh, have a special place in my heart. It's a uh, Gondi's Ether Heart, six generic legendary artifact. Whenever this or another artifact comes in, you get two energy. This is one of those cards. Whenever we look at ev- effects like energy, these things that need multiple cards, we always are interested in Commander when a card does all its own work. This card generates its own energy and it spends its own energy, and you can spend. What is that? Eight? One, two, three, four, yeah. five, six, seven, eight. You can spend eight energy. So when four artifacts enter, you can spend eight energy to exile Gonti's Ether Heart and take an extra turn after this one. That's super fun. Yeah. We're just we're gonna get that eventually, and we're probably gonna aim to cast that with Golos for free and just start profiting off of artifacts. The it's it's team up artifact unofficially is Etherworks Marvel. Four generic for a legendary artifact. It also generates energy and spends energy. Whenever a permanent you control is put into a graveyard, you get an energy and you can pay six of them to look at the top six cards of your library and cast one of them without paying its mana cost. That is a cast. That's not like a copy. So you're getting credit for casting it. The rest go on the bottom in a random order. Uh, We can just start earning all kinds of energy when things die when artifacts enter and 
we just get to decide like oh end of your turn you're not doing anything with uh i'll, I'll, I'll spin the marvel and see what i get uh, exactly. i don't think i need an extra turn this turn yeah nice little combo with bosch if you're tossing your artifacts in the graveyard that's gonna be Ooh, nice yeah uh, there's a few ways to make some tokens in this deck which like they're great as blockers or whatever you want to do with them uh getting yeah. them in the graveyard isn't too hard though uh ether so ether works marvel and gaunti's ether heart you know they're both legendary artifacts so we gotta take a look at them for this deck but i you know, I don't love that it, that the heart exiles itself a, after the extra turn. But sometimes yeah. an extra turn is all you need to do to win, right? You see that one extra turn. It's like, ooh, yeah. next turn I can win. It's like, well, why don't I just take that turn now, you know? Uh, the so opportunity cost of being able to crack it whenever you want mm -hmm. is huge. Every other extra turn thing, well, not every, but like the most of the spell-based ones, you have to reserve some mana for it. With the Ether Heart, once you're up there, you're just like, when it, when is it the perfect time? Oh, right now, this second, I'll take it. Very good point. Yeah. So I think this is a nice little combination. I think you're going to be able to do either of these things if you get either of these artifacts. And I also think that they work amazingly in tandem. Specifically, the heart really uh, feeding the Marvel uh, is what you're probably going to see happen. Yeah. Um, there's also some ways in which we can uh, get our spells at instant speed um, in this deck. And Raph Capuchin is the best way to do it. Uh, Raph Capuchin ships Mage. It's two white blue for the 3-3 three, three flash uh, creature with a legendary creature with flying. And you may cast historic spells as though they had flash. And of course, historic spells are uh, legendary spells. <clears throat> um, uh, hang on. Uh, artifacts and sagas. I wasn't even looking at the, the text when I was doing that. I was just trying to come up with it off the top it, of my head. It was obvious you weren't looking. Yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, uh, so take that. Um, um, yeah, so Raph can make uh, all those spells, which is basically every spell in our deck almost. Uh, wow. Be able to cast it at flash speed. But also we have Thran Temporal Gateway, which is kind of both a mana cheat and a way to get it into uh, at flash speed. So Thran Temporal Gateway is a four mana legendary artifact. Uh, you pay four and tap it, and you may put a historic permanent card from your hand onto the battlefield. Wow. So this won't cast as a cast or, or whatever. So for any of the things that where you're casting artifacts or casting uh, creatures, or whatever, won't count it. But it just puts it right on the battlefield. Gets around counter I mean, spells, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, Raph is less than a gumball, 14 cents. Thren Temporal Gateway, two gumballs. Between the two of them, two gumballs. What is Vidalcan Orrery going for? I don't know, 20 bucks, something like that. Uh, I would rather spend two gumballs and have two Vidalcan Orries yeah. in this deck. There's even another, um, I mean, Thran Temporal Gateway, you can only do it once per go around because it taps. Okay. Fair. But there's, there is another, there's a mirror, um, Shimmer Mirror, I think it's called. It uh, lets you cast artifacts at its Oh, speed. sure. Um, well, and let's not forget, like, Thran Temporal Gateway is an artifact with an activated ability. So we're going to copy that as well. And we're going to put more than one thing out at once exactly. from our hand yep. for oodles of mana. Oodles of right? mana. It costs us five, and we're going to put, like, 15 CMC down. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we've seen a lot of these legendary artifacts. This next one's a nice little, like, it's it's a little payoff, but it can actually result in you casting a lot of spells. Uh, oh, yeah. This one. Honor Worn Shaku. Three for an artifact. Tap, add one generic to your mana pool. This is an activated mana ability. We're not allowed to copy this. But we are allowed to copy this if we wanted. Tap an untapped legendary permanent you control. Untap honor worn shaku this is a way of saying all of your legendary permanents can tap for one generic mana mm -hmm. because the honor worn shaku lets you untap them and tap for mana again so you kind of it kind of filters through but yeah you can get tons of mana this way even if i don't have a way to cheat them out i'm happy to drop bosh using all of the other legendaries down there i can throw down golos just by tapping other permanents and not tapping any lands uh and then he gets another this 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 is uh, very fun yeah and because this is an artifact deck most of our artifacts are colorless so this is just going to let us cast those most powerful things that we have right so mm. uh it's this card i think is a really neat card in in legendary looking like legendary decks and stuff but in this one specifically where we're talking about a lot of artifacts it's it's i think it's the best it's ever been yeah um and just to talk about like one of the key legendary artifacts in our deck, it, the Circle of Loyalty is from Throne of Eldraine, uh, and this was where kind of we were, I was kind of inspired by Golos and like Standard and Eldraine and stuff, right? 
Uh, Circle of Loyalty is the one that's like not that expensive and really good. And you don't need to be a Knights deck to make this work. So Circle of Loyalty is four white-white for a legendary artifact. Uh, it costs one less to cast for each knight you control. Well, I'm very sorry, but I think there's only one other knight in the deck. Okay. I think there's a vampire knight, the black-white one that pumps your creatures. Uh, Arvad um, the Cursed. Arvad, that's right. Yes, I believe he's a knight. Uh, but creatures you control get plus one, plus one, which is not nothing. Like I said, there's some ways to make some thopters in this deck. There's some ways to that we're going to definitely have some creatures out. And more importantly, whenever you cast a legendary spell, create a 2-2 white knight creature token with vigilance. Remember, because of the circle of loyalty, that is a 3-3 knight with vigilance, which it doesn't wow. take too many of those to uh, really like bolster, like, build a deck up enough that, or sorry, a, a board up enough where you can just attack and do a lot of damage. But also circle of loyalty, you can just pay three and a white and tap it to make a 2-2 knight. So not I only like it. are we casting legendaries getting knights that way we can actually just make them with the circle of loyalty itself copy those abilities anything like that right so the circle is very good and, mm -hmm. and like i said does absolutely does not need a knight's tribal to be good legendary tribal works just fine with it <laughs> yeah right i mean ar arguably that's like the best part of this is that we get knights from casting legendaries. The fact that we only get a discount from having knights, that is and this deck has no problem generating mana or cheating out legendary spells. <laughs> exactly. So that part is almost flavor text for us any like even if we had a bunch of knights. <laughs> the awesome thing though is like if you have the circle out, you've made a few knights, and then someone destroys the circle and then you use like Kethis or Silas Ren or something to then just oh, yeah. cast it from your graveyard, you will get the the, that's the, true the discount on it right so amazing so amazing that, that can work that can happen uh and uh, finally yeah we've got this uh, just a nice really cool combo here that's going to help the deck and i just wanted to highlight it yeah uh muzio muzio visionary mm -hmm. art architect one blue blue legendary human artificer one three uh this legendary has an activated ability for three and a blue tap look at the top x cards of your library where X is the highest CMC of artifacts you control, and you can reveal an artifact from among them and put it straight onto the battlefield. The rest go on the bottom in any order. That's pretty good. <laughs> uh, how is Legacy Weapon? Seven generic for a legendary artifact, and it has an activated ability for Wooburg, Exile Target Permanent. That's amazing. Just, yeah. just like, hey, exile that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, and if it would be put into a graveyard from anywhere, reveal it, and shuffle it into its owner's library. I mean, the legacy weapon. If that would be mm -hmm. put into a graveyard from anywhere, uh, so so le like the legacy weapon could be any high CMC artifact in this case uh, to work with Muzio. So, but Muzio is just this again, like another way to like cheat these big artifacts into play if you already have one, right? So if we love it. Even if we have something like the Circle of Loyalty, that's six mana. You're gonna be able to find in the top six cards a a um an artifact that's six or less mana absolutely and seven yeah. i think actually no we cap out at eight because we have parhelion two in the deck um and seven is is the next uh we have two cards i think that are seven so i just wanted to highlight that we do have some high casting cost stuff in here we're going to get our values worth from muzio it's going to be really good mm -hmm. and uh Man. illusionist bracers works quite well with muzio as well oh does it ever <laughs> wow very fun andy this deck is super fun. Uh, I love what you've done with this, mm -hmm. copying fun abilities and maximizing them out. But were there any surprises and discoveries for you? Uh, there weren't very many because this is just used a lot of like high profile stuff that we we've seen and but combining it all together in this way, it was what was new about the deck, right? So, um, uh, I mean, Muzio could have been there, but uh, in the end, I was actually surprised at how good the weather light is. Mm. Uh, and this is the the one from Dominaria. It's the mythic four mana legendary artifact vehicle with flying. It's a four five it has crew three. And whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you look at the top five cards of your library. You can reveal a historic card from among them, put it into your hand, put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So basically, Weatherlight is just a sweet four five flyer vehicle. Um, and it can it's, it has basically better than draw a card in this deck. Uh, you get to look at the top five, and you will be able to pick basically anything you want. Like, I, like I think there's like maybe six cards in this whole deck, not counting lands, that are not legendary. 
And I think we even have a legendary land. And obviously, if you're going to trick out your mana base with more, um, like, legendary lands, you can. But because it's a five-color deck, there's not a lot of room for a lot of utility stuff. But anyways, mm. uh, but the Weatherlight basically has better than draw a card as it hits. So that's a, that's a nice uh, it's a nice effect. Yeah, very nice effect. It's funny that Ooh. this card's mythic, but it's, like, not really that good at anything. It wasn't good in standard. It never got played in any other format. It doesn't see much commander play. But in this deck, with Weatherlight, Weatherlight pulls its uh, its weight, if you will. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, great. Shall we move on to the budget report? It's time. This is where we take all of the cards and we see which of them are legendary and worth our legendary bucks. The ones that aren't are worth our counterfeit money. <laughs> we all of our counterfeit money that we yeah. make at our homes monopoly um, uh this deck okay this deck's high high costed because of a couple key things and if you've kept up with the last few decks uh and budget reports we've been keeping these kind of high cost cards in here to kind of show them off and be like hey look this card you'd be surprised is this much money and that's what's making the deck a lot uh and that's kind of what's going on here now that also being said though there's a couple of cards in here that are like four dollars five dollars they don't look like it's that expensive but then when they all add up you're like Ooh. Mm. so this deck is like 143 bucks which is a lot Ooh. it's more than Ooh. we like to more than i like to put out there usually uh uh <laughs> you know for the show but um definitely ways to cut it definitely ways to cut it down and definitely ways to get creative and uh recreate some of these things it is tougher because we're dealing with a lot of legendary stuff which is usually pretty unique but um if you look around there's definitely things you can do so the first uh, card that it's the most expensive card in the deck um, is Reki, the history of Kamigawa. Two and a green for the legendary human shaman. One, two, and whenever you play a legendary spell, draw a card. Okay. Without a doubt, extremely good in this deck. No question about it. Um, but I will say this. In this five-color Golos deck, green is by far the color that we see the least, mm. uh, which means it's going to be the hardest to cast. Now, because we have Golos, it's not really that bad because we can go and get our five mana. It's like, oh, I don't have any green mana yet. Guess what? Golos gets me that green mana, right? Command tower. No problem. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Um, but that being said, you know, maybe there's there, there might be, there may be times where the like four green spells in the deck are tough to cast. So that's a knock against Reki. The real knock though is that this card's ten dollars. Uh, you know, and I think if this wasn't such an expensive deck to, to like already begin with, because we're looking for kind of these hard to hard to replicate cards, I would very much like to keep Reki and keeping a ten dollar card in, in one of our decks is not outside of the realm of possibilities. Right. Uh, but because we're up at this high a budget, you know, you can definitely cut Reki and just replace it with any any other card draw you like. Kimena's Awakening is the one we always love to, to talk about on the show. And it's. Very, very good card draw um, for that for that sort of price. Anyways. Yeah. Uh, you got Memnarch on the list here. That's a seven generic artifact. It's a four or five legendary artifact creature. Also a wizard. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's got two activated abilities. We love those things in this deck because we're going to look to copy them. One blue, blue. Target permanent becomes an artifact in addition to the other types. Three and a blue. Gain control of target artifact. I mean, that's on its own is pretty great. Yeah. Uh, early game, you can just steal those ramp artifacts. And then late game, you can steal more important things. We can copy them. But it is eight bucks. Like, I mean, I always feel like like I'm happy to cut cards like this because it's like, you know, stealing people's stuff also is a little bit of a feel baddy thing. It's so. a lot of heat, too. A lot of people yeah. hate getting their stuff stolen. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I don't mind cutting that to save eight bucks. Uh, and uh, the third most expensive card is Chromatic Lantern. Wow. Uh, which is back up to $7. Just reprinted in Guilds of Ravnica, back up I to hope seven bucks. Everyone bought tons of these yeah. when it was released. Yes, absolutely. I think I saw this as low as $4 at one point, and that's hmm. the lowest you're going to see it because, because of decks like this that really need to have their mana fixed, right? Mm -hmm. um, that being said, you know, I think it's a, it's basically a must-have for five-color decks, but if you really wanted to cut this $7 card because you don't have it yet and you're, you're not looking to pick one up, Golos really does help you a lot with the mana fixing. Um, so like you almost want to ramp more than you want to fix, which is not usually the case in five color decks. Um, Golos really helps you a lot. Being able to cast them for five, you just got to get to that five, right? Once you get to the five, you can probably, you've probably found 
at least three or four of your colors. And like I said, there's not that many green cards in the deck, so you can actually kind of skimp on green if you need to. Uh, but either way, Golos is going to get you Command Tower every time, so you're going to be fine. So truly, this is the one of the only five-color decks I've, I've ever seen where it's like, I don't think we, we don't need Command Chromatic Lantern as badly as you would normally. So, wow, there you go. Uh, so right there, you're basically cutting out, you know, almost thirty dollars of value there. You're looking at twenty five bucks. But yeah, the other thing I will mention is that on TCG Low, this deck can be put together for seventy three dollars, which is half the price. So if you're cutting these cards and getting the low versions, you're looking at much less, right? So you're yeah, prob- you're probably in and around that sixty. Sixty dollar range there, so yeah. Uh, look for the deals. Look for the deals. Search the deals. Hit up our link on TCG Player. You can get those low prices. Look for the deals. Um, right. Uh, what's uh, what about favorite cards? Yeah. Um, um, yeah. What you got? I got Azor's Gateway, uh, mm-hmm. a legendary artifact for two mana. It says one tap, draw a card, then exile a card from your hand. If cards with five or more different converted mana costs are exiled with Azar's Gateway, you gain five life, and you can untap it and transform it into Sanctum of the Sun, where you tap and add X mana of any one color to your mana pool, where X is your life total. Just a really good card. Great legendary artifact to legendary land here. Really on theme. Uh, Big mana, something we're going to definitely be able to use. Uh, And if you're going to pick a color for Sanctum of the Sun, I would recommend either blue or white, because a lot of... This is basically a Jeskai deck that splashes black and then, like, very minimally splashes green. (laughs) Sure. So um, Sanctum of the Sun, you know, you're going to pick white or blue most of the time for it. Looting's great. And Mm -hmm. if your goal is to get five different CMCs under there, I think this deck has a wide range of CMCs. So it's going to be easier to do that than, you know, tight, low CMC decks. Yeah, absolutely. And, And you're also just happy to, like, exile lands out of your out of your hand sure yeah if you're never gonna flip this that's a one mana loot every turn is pretty good yeah all right sean what about you uh i'm gonna go with biomancer's familiar uh i love any way to like get things cheaper and if we're gonna say that if we're gonna say that like kirkesh and what's his name tanos Mm -hmm. are a big part of this then Biomancer's Familiar will certainly be something we got to put in here. Yeah. Uh, Biomancer's Familiar, it's a... Okay, my square fell is jammed. I don't know what it green, is. It's was... green blue for a 2-2 two, two mutant. Ooh. And it says activated abilities of creatures you control cost two generic less to activate, and it can't reduce it to, uh, to zero. Uh, one is the least you can put it down. But this is a nice pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It works really well with Golos to begin with. Mm-hmm. Knock the two off of it, so it's just straight Wooberg. Yeah. Uh, works great with Muzio. Uh, works great with Bosh. Right. Makes that three in w- red and one to just throw something. Works good with Memnarch if we're going to include it in the deck still for like right. stealing other people's artifacts. And Hannah Ship's Navigator, which we haven't talked about, uh, but... No, no, the other... Which yeah. Hannah? Yeah, yeah, Hannah Ship's Navigator. Ship's Navigator, right. Getting back artifacts mm-hmm. or enchantments from the graveyard. Amazing. Amazing utility. Do we need something to make everything even cheaper? Maybe not, but we'll take it. <laughs> Maybe not, but it's my favorite card. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it's just... Uh, I think once you have your cards out and you're looking to Bosch a lot or um, Muzio a lot or whatever it is, like I think that like that's how this... like You're going to win with value with this deck, right? So I think something like the familiar is going to be helpful at different stages of the game, right? Mm-hmm. This can this can help you get ahead in the early stages. I think that I think I think that's worth it. Ooh, fun, fun! Yeah, this was neat. It was uh, it was fun to come across this theme, legendary yeah. artifacts. Not something you see super often, um, but uh, but really fun to work with. I I wasn't sure how it was going to come together, but it's but. There's a there's a there's some synergy here, and I think it's it's really it's fun to play with, and you're gonna have a good time with this deck. Yeah, it looks. I had a fun time just talking about it. So yeah, <laughs> if you like sure. if you like doing big splashy things and casting things for less than they should be, uh, hmm. look to this deck. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, well, thanks for watching uh, this week, everyone. Remember, uh, go to uh, uh, go to Wizard Tower and use our code if you're in Canada, Bruel Drain. Uh, if you're uh, in the states, check out TCG Player and use our affiliate link. Uh, which is included on our show notes and uh, below our video on YouTube and everything like that. Uh, so thanks for thanks for being here, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.
Thanks for watching. If you love what we're doing, consider supporting the show by going to patreon.com slash commandersbrew. And if you want to get any of the cards from our deck list, go to our TCG player affiliate link below. That helps us out too. And for a free way to help us out, consider sharing the show with some friends. Like and subscribe, add a comment or two. See you later. Bye.